Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective. And today I have an interesting HP model for you. And this is literally called the HP Model 14. This specific variant is the 14CF0018CA. And I'll briefly explain the specifications that shipped with this particular model. But what you're about to see in here, especially when we get to disassembly, is pretty much the same for all 14 model series. So there, there's a lot of different designations out there, and this is only one of them, but a lot of this will still be applicable to your model. I will be leaving a detailed service manual in the description below, so you can see all of the different models that are captured within that and some of the specifications. I'll briefly touch on that, but we're mainly gonna be focusing on this one here. So these are a 2018 era machine, or at least this version of it and it is entirely built out of plastic. So you are not spending a lot of money on the exterior components. However, the interior components are actually not that bad. The keyboard leaves a little bit to be desired. It doesn't have a whole lot of resistance, so you're not gonna win any prizes there. However, the guts aren't terrible. So here's what I mean by that. In this particular model, there is a 1920 by 1080 display, so we are full HD here. However, other variants did come with a considerably worse 1366 by 768 panel that reviewers at the time did not like. This specific model is an Intel i5-8250U and has 8 gigs of RAM DDR4 2400 MHz from the factory. It can handle up to 16 gigabytes max from what I can find online with two slots of eight gigabytes each. Whether or not it can do more, I have no idea. Because it is an eighth generation Intel, we are running the Intel UHD 620. And there are a lot of different system boards that will fit in this chassis that have seventh gen, uh, eighth gen, as well as like Pentium or Celeron variants and variants. So there's a lot of different system boards that can fit into this chassis, and that's where you get all your different model numbers from. On the inside, it did ship with a 256 NVMe M.2 SSD, but according to the manual, there should be a 2.5 inch SATA bay in there as well. So we'll see that when we get on the inside. All of this is being driven by a relatively small 3 cell 41 watt hour battery, but enough about that. Let's go ahead and do a quick tour of the ports. So on the left hand side, we have the Kensington lock slot. We do have a USB type C port here, which is 3.1 gen one. So about five gigabytes uh, a second there. You do have a full sized SD card slot and then some indicator lights. On the other side, we have power. We have a full size ethernet port that expands, HDMI 1.4B and then two USB 3.1 ports, and then a headphone microphone combo jack. We don't have anything along the front, and we don't have anything along the back, and it is very stock, but has pretty much all the major ports that the average person would need. You've got full ethernet, HDMI, USB, you've got the card slot, and you've got USB Type-C as well. So there's actually a fair bit to like on that front. Just heading quickly back on the inside, the keyboard, as I mentioned, is exceptionally unremarkable. The trackpad is very, very wide, but also very, very narrow. And then you have two dedicated click buttons, which I'm not a huge fan of, but they would be entirely serviceable. You, of course, do have a webcam and microphone array sitting up here at the top, but again, nothing exceptionally special. So, with that being said, let's turn over this example and talk about how you get on the inside. For this, we will need our disassembly kit. And the very first thing that we can do is actually remove these two screws that are angled up at us. And they spin out very easily. They're not captive or anything. And then we can put those off to the side. Now we are far from done. These two rubberized feet will need to be removed, and the best way to do that is to grab a small, thin uh, Phillips, get underneath, and the manual says remove quickly. And that was a bad idea. So don't do what the manual says, because I just ripped it in two. So what we're doing here is we're using the uh, blade of my pry tool here 
and we're just kind of rocking it back and forth to loosen the adhesive while gently pulling because doing what the manual said was a bad idea. The uh, rubberized feet here or the adhesive is either too strong, too weak. Um, <laughs> it ends up being a pretty bad combination. All right, now that we have the rubber feet removed, we can switch back to our Phillips and spin out these silver colored screws. So with those screws out of the way, we are gonna need to grab a plastic pry tool and we'll open up the device as far as it can go. And we need to find an edge to get ourselves into the device. Normally, these are easier to open at the front of the machine. And I started it with my metal tool, but I'm going to immediately replace that with a plastic one because I don't want to damage the uh, finish. And plastic, as you probably know, is less likely to damage plastic. So we're just going to work our way around the edge here. All right, now that we have the cover separated, we can go ahead and examine the interior contents of this machine. And for a machine that's entirely made out of plastic, the inside is actually a bit of a pleasant surprise. A couple of things that we'll point out right away. First is our two RAM slot. In this case, we do have one eight gigabyte stick with the other slot ready for another eight gigabyte stick. We do have a M.2 NVMe slot, which is occupied. And then we have our SATA bay that in this model remains unfulfilled. Now it would appear that there is uh, a caddy or a, an additional part that would be required that is not present on this model. Here is the part here labeled HDD. So that's where you would obviously plug in your hard disk drive caddy cable assembly. You'd be able to drop in another drive and you should be able to run two drives in this which again, for a machine that's made entirely out of plastic at this price point, is a pleasant surprise. A few other pleasant surprises is we do have a removable Wi-Fi card, and interestingly enough, our USB Type-C connection is actually on its own daughter board, and again, that's a bit of a pleasant surprise at a machine at this price point. So by taking a look at the inside, we can see that there's actually a fair bit of upgradability that is possible with one of these units. What is obviously not really possible, of course, is that if you have a CPU that is insufficient for your needs, you are swapping the entire board. However, this rivals some repairability of laptops that market such a feature, which is kind of an interesting point. And one that I'll probably be spending a little bit more time in depth on the channel later on. And that is discussing that there are still a lot of repairable machines, they're just not in the price bracket where we would expect to find them. We would expect our very high-end premium devices to be our most repairable, and it seems like the inverse and unexpectedly ends up being true. There is a lot that can be upgraded here, and I think that it is a bit of an underestimation often of what is actually possible. The other thing I'll mention is that there is a backlit keyboard option that you can see has a separate cable here. The ribbon for the regular keyboard is here, and then we see a BL located there, 
which very likely will stand for backlit or backlight. So you could, I think on some models, actually get a backlit keyboard uh, on this little fellow. With all that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and put this guy back together and turn it on. All right, with everything back together, let's go ahead and turn it on and see what kind of boot times we get. That's pretty darn quick. I know one of the things that some of the original reviewers complained about was actually the BIOS slowing this thing down. However, I think over the several years that this machine's been released, that's been patched out. And as you can see, we are running Windows 11 because we have an 8th gen Intel inside. And honestly, the screen is a little on the glossy side, more reflective than I would like. Uh, you can really tell because you can see the, uh, the keyboard in the reflection there. But overall viewing angles are not super terrible, uh, so long as you're right on. And by and large, this is not a bad device. There are definitely a couple of things that I wouldn't want to live with personally, the keyboard and trackpad setup being one of them. However, if you were on a budget, you found one of these, nobody really cares or knows what it is, it's running the 8th gen Intel, then I would say that there's a, a fair degree of flexibility when it comes to upgrading. You can get it up to 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is a good amount for most people. You can throw in two solid state drives, a two and a half inch, and then an NVMe. You've got uh, just a nice little computer. It's not gonna be super durable. If it, you drop this on the floor, it's probably gonna break rather easily because of its all plastic design. But if you are on an extreme budget and you happen to find one of these and you just need something that works, there isn't exactly a whole lot really wrong with this that you wouldn't be able to mitigate over time. At any rate, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed our look at this HP Model 14. It was an interesting dive into kind of the cheaper end of the market, and there is still value to be had there. In fact, sometimes there might be more value on that end of the market than you might realize. If you've enjoyed this sort of content and would like to help support the channel, I would ask that you do the big four. Please like the video share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so the next time I feature a laptop like this that might be able to save you a little bit of money and still perform well, you'll be the first to know about it. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.